Okay, Pueblo City, pay attention. She's about to get him. She's going to get him good, too. ...of Pueblo. Um, and, and, and on that note, um, Pueblo has a higher rate of poverty than um, a lot of other cities in the state. Um, so, and I think those things go hand in hand, that if people have more money to spend, they will spend it. Um, so, how do you plan to get people to spend more money when they don't have it to spend? Well, get them more money. Get them more money. Get them. You see that? She asked, what are you going to do about poverty? And neither one of them really want to take the question. And How do you plan to get people to spend more money when they don't have it to spend? Well, get them more money. Get them more money. Get them. Then, once they sort of passed the buck to each other and... Uh, then Gratisart spoke up, and he just said, actually, give them economic development, right? So this stinkonomics, this reeconomics, eek, economics is right. That's exactly what they're going to put upon Pueblo City. They're going to do a right-wing capitalist plan. They're going to do a right-wing capitalist plan. Uh, the Petco is corporate welfare. So they give money to the corporations. They will never give money to any person that needs money. We need to continue figuring out a way to increase the revenues, and we're going to do that by diversifying our economy, continue to try to draw more people to our community. If this city does not grow, and trust me, one of the things I love about this city, it has big city amenities but has a small town environment. That's what I love about Pueblo. I don't want that to change a lot, but if we don't grow, we're going to die. So if either one of these folks were serious about poverty, then they would have a plan, right? They would have a plan to address or to alleviate poverty. How are they going to alleviate poverty if either one of them are serious? Just ask both of them, where's your plan to alleviate poverty? But then again, the poor people don't vote, so fuck them, right? If you don't vote, you don't matter, you stupid fucks. So you're politically, you just have zero power. If you don't even vote, oh yeah, I'm sure you're really calling the representatives and you're lobbying and you're pushing for reform and you're asking questions about the issues that face the nation, state, or the city, depending on where you live. So what is Gratisar and Noel Rocky going to do about poverty? Not jack shit. They're going to keep a thumb up their ass. That's what they're going to do. She got them. She got them good. That, um... You know, that, that situation, I've been, I was a public trustee in Pueblo County for 17 years, appointed by four different governors to serve as the public trustee. One of the things you need to know is that no taxpayer money is used to operate the public trustee's office. All the money that's used to operate the public trustee's office is generated by foreclosures and releases of deeds of trust. In 2009, Pueblo City had tried to pass the so-called strong mayor ballot initiative, but it failed by 10-20%. Last year, they were able to get it, and it is passed, and they had an election. So not last year. Last year, they had the election. The runoff election is going on right now, but it had been the end of 2017. So November 2017, the so-called strong mayor plan was initiated. Pueblo City had first been, uh, not first, they had a mayor at first, actually. They had about 20-something mayors at first, and then it became a ceremonial position uh, after the first charter convention. But... The 2009 mayor, when it failed, right, then it passes just uh, last year, 2017 or two years ago, a year and two months ago, then the uh, system that was changed was a city manager system, which they had since 1950. They had a, the city charter changed again in 1954 because they changed so many things. They just had to get a new charter afterwards. But 1950 is when they ushered in the city manager system. Everybody was all about corporate CEO the 1950s, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Marilyn Monroe. This is when the tax rate was 90%. And so America was spending a shit ton of money on itself, on roads, infrastructure, schools, so essentially to stop communism, you have to actually give a shit about your people because if you don't give a shit about your people, well, how is communism not going to take root? So Eisenhower, the 1950s, 1954, they got a city manager system because they thought that the CEO system of a corporation, you got the board of directors, well, you got five, six, ten guys, and then you got the CEO. And the CEO runs the show until the board of directors says, you get the fuck out of Dodge. That's the only power that the board of directors has, in fact, is choosing the CEO and then firing that piece of shit CEO when they're not doing what the hell they need to do. So that's the, the power of the board. So that's what city council used to be and the city manager used to be. So the city manager was not elected. 
the city council was elected, uh, seven, a body of seven people. So once those seven people was elected, then once they were elected, they would pick the city manager. So if you want to be the king or queen of Pueblo City, you would have to have known that process. You'd have to have been smart enough to have read the charter to know how this process works. So if you want to run the show, you would have had to have been like Sam Azad. Sam Azad was able to angle himself, and he put himself in that position, and then he was the king for five years. He could have been recalled at any time. Pueblo City is the same city that recalled their city manager because the city manager invited candidate Barack Obama to come speak. It's mostly Hispanic folks and white folks, so it's about 50-50, brown and white, and hardly no black people at all in Pueblo City. They're racist as shit. They're so fucking racist that when Barack Obama came into town, they fired their mayor. They fired their mayor for inviting Barack Obama, and guess what? Politically, you know, say what you want. Should you invite the candidate? Shouldn't you not? Are you showing favoritism? Uh, Barack Obama was elected president. So that means Pueblo City would have had a very useful city manager because that city manager had a relationship with the president, was able to get him into the city and help him get elected. So politically, pragmatically, it would have made more sense to have kept the city manager, whoever was city manager 2008, on board in Pueblo City. It had been better if you would have just kept that city manager on board because that candidate Barack Obama thing, Donald Trump came in. Nobody got fired when Donald Trump came in, but somebody got fired. The mayor got fired, city manager. So there's poverty, there's homelessness, there's police brutality. There's a lot of shit, crime, that Pueblo City could have recalled their city manager on. They had that instantaneous power. Whenever the fuck city council said, get the fuck out of here, mayor, they could have fired them. Now city manager doesn't, now the city council doesn't have that power. There is no city manager. He's going to be on as an advisory role or some shit. But the city manager office is going to be dissolved, and you're going to get a brand new mayor who's uh, popularly elected. So instead of voting for the city council, and then they elected them and doing it like the CEO, like a corporate board, now you're doing it basically like a democracy. So the mayor also comes in with the two-round system, the two-round Kyrgyzstan cut third election. They could have instituted the most revolutionary, the most fair, the most democratic and fair election ever devised, instant runoff voting, ranked choice voting, but they're too scared of the libertarians, they're too scared of the greens, they have to cheat in order to win, that's the way these big wigs have to play it, they have to be elitist sons of bitches. Uh, the steel mill, European history and the Mexican history have come together and melted together in our community, we need to continue that. I said I was committed to raising a million dollars a year to promote Pueblo. So in order to get the strong mayor on the ballot, you had to get initiative. You had to go out and get signatures. How many signatures? They got about 1,000, maybe 2,000 signatures. That's all it took for them to completely overthrow the government. So strong mayor got passed. There's been the first round of election last November and now uh, January 22nd. January 22nd, we're going to see what happens next. So that's when the second round to the two-round system is actually going to be voted on. So who's going to win, Noraki or Gratisar? Gratisar or Noraki? So they manufactured this bullshit, you know, majority winner takes all. If Steve Noraki wins, then doesn't that mean that the majority person who won the most votes, Nick Gratisar, didn't win? Yeah, that's so stupid. That's Dennis Flores' kind of argument, right? If you have a runoff system... The whole idea is that you had 16 candidates, so the two top ones, they were the, you know, the two top ones, but you don't know if you would have cut those 14 out, how those two would have fared against each other. So instant runoff voting is just like uh, the system now, but instead of just having two runoffs, you could have had five, six, seven, depending on how many, you know, choices. Pick your candidates from one to five, one to ten. If you picked from one to ten, then you would have had ten runoff elections in an instant. If you would have picked one to five, you would have had five runoff elections in an instant. It. That's what they did not want. They did not want to be fair to the independents. They didn't want to be fair to the Greens or the Libertarians. They are cheaters. The Republicans in the Democratic Party in Pueblo City, mostly the Democrats, because the Democrats are the ones that's running everything, but they're fucking cheaters. And they essentially... Milwaukee and Gratisar might as well pull down their goddamn panties and shat in the faces of every single Pueblo in Pueblo City, adults, elderly, children, everybody. They ruined it. What the Gratisar and Milwaukee said to Pueblo City, fuck you, Pueblo City. 
fuck you ever get in a right and proper and fair democracy? They had a chance to do it, but they didn't. Instead, they did an elitist mechanism, two-round system, which didn't benefit one conservative Republican, one rich and powerful, and then one radical progressive, one working class person. There was only two people that was going to float to the top, and so I assumed Diverger's law would have worked. One conservative and one uh, liberal would have floated to the top. Instead, it was two rich and powerful people. So the two turds that floated to the top was one, the Chamber of Commerce president, Mr. Corporation, and the next president of city council, Mr. Establishment who was on council for eight years, the top eight of the 16 of the 16 candidates that were able to get enough signatures to get on the ballot were city council folks, sons the Chamber of Commerce president. So the seven, the top seven of the eight of the 16 had been on city council prior to run it. So if you were on city council, then you had a greater chance of winning. If you had power before, if you had money and wealth power, those are the people that had a chance, the people who were politically entrenched for many years, the good old boys. The only people that had a chance in the Kyrgyzstan two-round election were the good old boys. The regular folks, the regular folks kind of candidates, the working class people, your Charlotte Perez's, your Gary Clark's, your Janet Wilson's, they're forced to the bottom of the heap. The two-round Kyrgyzstan cut the Third election was just that. They cut the third of good, honest, hard-working average Americans, such as Charlotte, Gary, and Janet. The working man don't stand a chance. So the two-round system is bullshit. So over that 17 years, and foreclosures and releases are cyclical. They go up and down. There were periods of time that I never got a salary uh, when I was supposed to get a salary as the public trustee. Tourism certainly would be a big part. I've also am recommending four different advisory committees that would be permanent advisory committees to the mayor's office. One of them... Uh, what happened was the Denver Post did a series of stories about the ten appointed public trustees. They didn't like the system. They wanted to change the system. Governor... I may go back to another question on this. Is that within the rules? Um, on the tax question? I believe, sir, that you have uh, one minute left. Yes, I'd just like to point this out, that the Tax Act of 1954, passed by the 83rd Republican Congress, is not divine script, it's not sac sacrosanct, sacrosanct, it is man-made law, it is filled with inequities and injustices, I refuse to accept it without protesting against it, I did not vote for it, I thought that it was injustice consummate, and I feel that the, that the tax loopholes will not be closed, until there is a firm determination on the part of more of us in the Congress, like myself, to demand some equity in the tax laws.